I don't want to misquote it, but basically, you know, other people's reaction to you are definitely going to have an impact yeah. on, on, you know, um, on, on how you behave and then how you, you know, go to interact further. So definitely, my friend, I think social pressures are, are absolutely huge, especially in those big classes too. I, yeah. I, I used to think the opposite. I was like, oh, classes are going to be big. There's many opportunities to make friends. But in reality, I found that for whatever reason, in the smaller classes, I find it a little bit easier to talk to people. It's a little more cozy. It's like, yeah, I don't me know, too. I'd love to, do you feel the same way? Yeah. And whereas those big ones, it's like, oh my goodness, man. And, and even in those, I believe, Brandon, you were the one who pointed it out to me. You're like, Daniel, like, like check out the, the seats. And when I looked over, you could see one person sitting, a space, and then another person sitting, a space. And like, what does that tell you about people? Yeah, that's right. I, and that kind of goes back to also what I was saying, you know, the first couple of days, talk to the person beside you. And this is an interesting phenomena is, you know, if you look on the bus or you look in a lot of lecture halls, um, everybody leaves that one gap where you're not sitting directly next to somebody. You know, you, it ends up in this whole checkerboard sort of mm -hmm. lecture hall as people begin to drop out, you know, on the first couple of days, it's a full lecture hall, you know, every seat's full. So you can't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. But as time goes on and people drop out, uh, you do end up with that checkerboard pattern. And it's a lot hard to, uh, to have social contact with people uh, when that happens. And I've heard mixed things. Some people prefer to be left alone and some wish, just wish somebody would sit down beside them and start a conversation. Mm -hmm. But if everybody's sitting there wishing somebody would sit down and start a conversation, then nobody's actually starting the conversation. And You're I know right, I, for right. one, is someone that am sitting there hoping someone will sit down beside mm -hmm. me and start a conversation where I feel like you're more the person that will be the one to sit down beside them and start the conversation. <laughs> it goes both ways. It goes both yeah. ways. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So if you're ever, you know, if you see somebody, you know, uh, whether for friends or, you know, a, a romantic interest, if that's what you're looking for, I would definitely recommend taking that, uh, taking that leap. I mean, you can sit down beside them and, you know, that's just the start, you know, maybe take it step by step make it your goal to at least just sit down beside somebody. You don't need to start a conversation right, right away, but uh, you know, baby steps build up and eventually, you know, it'll, it'll pay off. And then how awesome is it, man? After that first day you exchange names, you get to know them. Now you have a friend yeah. who you can regularly talk to. Well, yeah, we've got a, you know, our friend group almost took up a whole row this year uh -huh. in, in the lecture uh -huh. hall, you know, 14 or so people that yeah. know, and we went out to do that escape room and it's it's made the university experience much better in in my opinion you know first year in the first semester i was you know pretty much one of those uh you know doing it alone sort of thing and um where i was still enjoying the the course and the content i have to admit second year when i when i had a whole bunch more friends i just got so much more out of the out of the university experience you know study groups were you know became a thing and were incredibly useful um, things to do on the weekend, birthday parties, you know, and even people to vent to, to, you know, a shoulder to lean on because we're all in it together, you know, and it's not an easy experience. And I would definitely recommend as part of your foundation, um, whether you have it yet or not going into university or during university is to have that, um, that social outlet, that um, support group is a huge one. You know, maybe you rely on your family at first, but definitely make it a priority or an intention to, to discover the, um, a group of like-minded in individuals and friends um, at university. And it can be, I know it's, it is difficult. It can be difficult for some people, uh, depending on your circumstance, uh, you know, depending on uh, certain environmental or uh, certain other factors going on. Even if you're living on campus or away from campus, all that can influence how easy it is to, to meet friends. And I, unfortunately, you know, it breaks my heart every time I see, you know, some of these anonymous posts on the, on the UVic page, you know, a lot of people who are in their fourth year and um, are still struggling to fit in and find that, mm. uh, find that group. And that can be, that can be a tough thing. And, you know, oftentimes the university, their response is, you know, join a club, join this, join that. But, you know, if you have a social anxiety, that also does make it very difficult for people to get out there. You know, that's always the biggest advice you hear is you just need to be out there. You know, you need to be more open and out there. And, um, yeah, it may, it's definitely cliche makes sense, but it's not the whole put picture. You know, you need more than that. You know, you need more than just be out there or be open. Um, whether that means, you know, get, having going to see a counselor because there's a lot of counseling services um on on campus or even doing some independent independent research get a book check out youtube check out your channel <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and um 
for some tools to meet people. Uh, for mine, when I first joined um, the university, I joined the, uh, the meditation club and that was a great outlet uh, to meet people. And it didn't require a massive time sink or anything. It was just a simple meeting every, for me it was Thursday, but it was Monday and Thursday that uh, I would go to that for 45 minutes and you know, meet some really similar people. I think that's, a, that's the key thing as well, is when you do join up with something, mm -hmm. try and find something with individuals that are, are like-minded to you, and that'll make the finding the friend process so much easier and better. It's almost like you'll, you'll be a sponge and you'll just absorb like-minded people to you. That, that's an important thing. And I also found personally, I would, might censor some of, my, some of my interests. Like, for example, um, you know, being a gamer, I almost, there was a time where I found it, you know, embarrassing to, you know, say I'm a part of it, say a gaming club or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a World of Warcraft club or something like that, because, you know, you want to, you know, appear. It's not the cool adult. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's just a social construction. So don't be afraid of your interests. Don't be afraid of who you are. Um, like I know at our university, like we do have a World of Warcraft club. We <laughs> have so cool. a, like a robotics club to build cool little rockets and cars and stuff um there's almost a club for everything on campus you know magic the gathering the card game there's uh tons of cool stuff and if you have an idea the campus is totally open to you starting your own club and chances are there's a bunch of like-minded people i know most universities also have uh, facebook pages which are which are pretty good whether they be an anonymous a question and answer forum or like a confessions and crushes page that's that's one that we have that can be quite entertaining from time to time <laughs> but they're a great way to fire out an idea out there anonymously and see what kind of feedback you can get I mean, i've seen tons where you know honestly someone was like i'm not interested in drinking or you know any drugs or that sort of thing i i, ju I just want to find some friends who enjoy being sober and do things so they posted on, uh, on online saying, how many people would be interested in like a, uh, an abstinence club where we just play board games sober, go out and do fun things, hikes, that sort of thing. Yeah, and the yeah. amount of responses they got was crazy. And then it became a thing. Oh, and so cool. Yeah. So th th those are a useful tool as well when you're, uh, when you're trying to find that friend group. But I think before any of that, before you even go to do anything, mindset is a huge thing as well. Um, you need to believe that it is possible for you to find friends. You need to believe that your ideal friend group is out there and you are going to find them because it kind of, we call it a kind of sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, that's the term in psychology where oftentimes when you believe a certain way, you are subconsciously making choices that will reinforce that belief. So if you believe you're alone and you're always going to be alone, you're a loner, that, and that is your identity, then you make subconsciously or uh, you will make decisions in your interactions and your dialogues with others that will be automatic and will go to reinforce that belief. So that's something you want to you focus on changing. Changing first, even before you get out there, is that mindset. Brilliant, Brandon. You're so right, my friend. Cause just because when you said it earlier, oh, you just have to go out there. You know, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, just be yourself. When you throw those kind of, you know, cliche statements out there, they don't understand that you really need to have the foundation. You have to have the, the mindset beforehand, right? You have to believe, you know, I, I am worthy of, of having a wonderful yeah. experience. I am worthy of having friends. There are like-minded people for me out there, you know, or when people say, just be yourself. But you're like, oh, like, I want to be more confident. Like, I like I, but I'm not confident. I, I don't know if I want to be, you know what I mean? There's, there becomes that conflict. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely, Brandon, definitely. I think, you know, with the, the uh, anxiety that, that can come upon, right? Because just naturally reaching out, right? Reaching out to people to a vulnerable state, you know, where people can make fun of you and judge you in X, Y, and Z. And I think being able to take that step and just really, you know, being okay with taking a risk, with putting yourself out there, right? With making a Facebook post, knowing that someone could comment and say something harsh. I, I think that is a, that is a great, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A great sign of courage on its own. Yes, it is. It is a big step. And that's what also makes it tricky because it is, um, it's almost not the full picture either, you know, saying change your mindset. It, it can be the same as saying uh, you just need to be more out there because mm -hmm. there are sometimes some preliminary things that need to need to happen. And, you know, that is something that I do is if there is a task that, you know, I want to want to do, it helps to break it down into its component chunks. 
uh, breaking it down to easier steps. You know, if posting on a website is too big of a chunk and you, there's too much anxiety around that, um, there are definitely simpler steps that, that we can take. Now, as far as mindset goes, that's actually where a lot of my research is going to go um, once I've graduated and do a graduate program. Um, I am planning on looking at, you know, what is the most efficient and effective way to change uh, those thought patterns, that lens of which you view the world without it being so much of like you're butting heads with yourself. So instead of it's, mm. you know, you kind of working against yourself and your mind's pushing back until finally there you are, how can you make it so you, it's you working with you um, to create those, those beliefs that, that will support you and aid you?